Hey what's up guys it's Ben Bonk and recently the channel hit 20,000 subscribers. So to celebrate I decided to make a game with the community. The idea was that I would spend an hour working on a game and then after that hour is up I would pass on the game to another person to work on it. And then I would work for an hour, someone new would work for an hour, and the cycle repeats until the game is done. This sounded like a really fun challenge so with that said I got to work. First thing I did was create a new Unity project and I started working on a basic 2D movement script. Eventually, I got that done, and I also created a teleport mechanic for the player, where the player could press shift, and the player would then blink in the direction he is moving. With that said, that was my hour of work done, and I passed the project on to PolarCube 1, and he did a lot. First of all, he started working on changing the movement to be more mouse-based and dashing-like. He also added a destructible terrain system, a basic enemy, and a camera follow system. Finally, he added a universal health system, and with all that done, the player can now dash around with the mouse, destroy terrain, and even kill enemies. Now it's time for me to work again, and most of my time was spent just trying to understand the changes that Plurkview made and fixing a few of the issues that arose. I also decided to change the movement system once again. Previously, the player would move at a fixed distance per click, but this just didn't feel too natural to me, so I reworked the system to adjust the movement force based on how far away the player is from the cursor. Finally, I started adding the katana weapon. It was really just a draft, but I thought it could potentially be a cool idea, though later on, this idea kinda got scrapped. I then passed the project over to 8 Blitz, and he added a projectile enemy to the game. He also added some particles for when the projectile was destroyed, and when a cube is destroyed. And finally, he added some little circles with faces to the player and projectile sprites. The project was handed back to me, and I decided to add an upgrade system. The player also had currency, and can use his currency to buy upgrades. So far, there's a speed upgrade, heart upgrade, and damage upgrade, but these were just ideas for now. Next up was Hammer86GN, and he added a way to gain currency through breaking the destructible terrain and fixed up some other small stuff. It was my turn yet again, and I fixed up some scripting issues and also added a versatile level loading system, which I use in almost all my games. Finally, the health system was causing some pretty big issues, so I focused a lot of my time trying to patch that up. Now it was him's turn to work, and he made some really big changes and additions to the project. First, he added lasers, moving platforms, and landmines to the game. The lasers were really neat, and they would damage and rebound the player on contact. Additionally, the landmines would damage the player and blow up if the player touched them, and the moving platforms could move around. The cool thing here is that all these systems could be controlled with these buttons. For example, linking the button and the laser would turn the laser off, linking the button and the landmine would blow up the landmine when the button was pressed, and linking the moving platform would move the platform's position. This was all super cool and opened up so many interesting challenges that the player could face. Finally, him also added some invincibility for the player. Now it was back to me again, and I had a lot to work with. I was still kind of unsure of what this game was actually going to be, so instead of drafting out ideas like I should have, I just added a currency UI counter to the top left of the screen and some screen shake when the player bumps into things. I also tried to clean up the health system yet again, and I nerfed the player's speed and time between moves a bit, so I planned for him to be able to regain this through the upgrade system. Though, as you'll see later, this never really happened. Next up was Nate Dev, and I'll pass it over to him for his contribution. Hi, I'm Nate Dev. Going into this project, I knew it would be super messy and disorganized. This wasn't the fault of the developers, it's just something that happens. But anyway, during the short time that I had the project, I didn't actually add any new features. I spent my time doing a lot of refactoring and optimization to the code. I also took use of interfaces and made the code a lot more susceptible to change. And finally, I did my best to add summaries and comments wherever it was applicable. I don't normally like doing this because I think your code should be self-documented. But this time I made an exception just because of the type of project that it was. Back to me again it was, and I mostly just spent my time trying to understand all of Nate's changes. He's definitely a better programmer than I am, and his code is super organized and much more efficient than the previous code in the game. However, because of these changes, some mechanics ended up kind of breaking, so I spent most of my time just trying to get this testing scene back to normal. Next was Ibrahim Dev, and he worked on some more project organization, the first level for the game, and some other things. Additionally, he had a temporary start screen for the game. He also suggested that we go for a level based kind of puzzle game which was an interesting idea. For my time, I thought about this and I definitely agreed as this game definitely needed some structure at this point and a game plan, as right now it was just a bunch of mechanics in one scene. I decided that it would be neat to have the goal to be to destroy all the destructible terrain in the level which would unlock the level exit. This would also be kind of like a puzzle game because of the button mechanics, but there still would be challenging aspects with the different enemies. For my actual work, I created a flag slash level complete script which would unlock this check mark when all the destructible blocks in the level are destroyed. There were also some merge conflicts that arose, so I patched this up and I also started creating the first few levels which would serve as kind of tutorial levels, introducing the various mechanics to the player, and with that done, we had a few basic levels finally in the game. 
It was now Blank Dev's turn, and I'll pass it off to him. Hey, look at this cute bean, but also a sad bean, because he's very lonely, just like me. I saw that the player moves faster the further away they are from the mouse, so naturally I designed a cute cursor friend for the player. I also made them both look at each other, story undying love, longing, blah blah blah, 10 out of 10, don't question it, I only had an hour. Whoever wrote this, I love you. Happy coding everyone! Now what's next? Wait, no, don't show them that! Back to me, and I removed the default white cursor from the game, fixed some issues with the scene transition, and made it clear so that the player only has one health and will die after one hit no matter what. I also created four more new levels, which introduced all the game's mechanics such as block breaking, lasers, buttons, mines, enemies, and so on. None of the levels were final and fully polished, but they were a really good start and offered room so more challenging levels could be made. Our next contributor was Sir Stotes, and he mostly focused on upgrading the art for the game. We really like this minimalist art style the game had so far, but some sprites still needed touch-ups or new art. So Sir Stotes got to work on that, and as you can see in this epic time-lapse, he created and recreated tons of art in the game, so massive props there. After his time was up, the game looked way better in my opinion, and the new sprites really helped, but I think the new sprites could have used some color adjustments. Now it's my turn again, and I really spent my time this round fixing a bunch of glitches in the game that I noticed earlier, like the button not triggering the first time you hit it. Additionally, I created one more level, introducing the camera follow, and I also created a camera follow confiner with Cinemachine. It's still decently easy, but definitely harder than previous levels, as the first six levels were kind of tutorial levels, so I wanted to make sure the player has at least 12 to 15 total levels utilizing the game's mechanics and to actually challenging the player. Next, we have Game Dev Goose, and here's what he did. It looks like it's some sort of puzzle game, although I'm not really liking some of these particles. I have an idea. What if, like, chunks fly off, but they're like pieces of the box with physics? Why did he choose me for this? That was a terrible idea. Like, Ben, what are you doing? <laughs> oh my god. Ben, I think I screwed up your game. <laughs> Actually, it's like instantly more fun like this. <laughs> I'm sure Ben can fix that. Sorry, Ben. That's how we celebrate 20,000 for you. See that this game is lacking a name? I'm gonna call it Ben Bonk the Ball. Because you're bonking a ball. So at this point, I made a lot of changes to the menu that I won't talk about in depth, but this is what it looks like in the end. Ben, I really appreciate you including me in this, and congratulations on 20,000 subs. Back to me again, and this time around, I started off by fixing the box destroy effect that Game Dev Goose made, as it was pretty glitchy. After that was done, you can see it looks much better in my opinion. Next, I massively improved the projectile enemy and projectiles. I got it so that the projectiles would actually shoot towards the player, and I also started creating an 8th level, but I didn't finish it as making hard levels can be really hard. I then passed the project over to Camo, and he did a bunch of small things like giving the enemy a timer so it doesn't move before the level starts, cleaned up some code, and created a multiple tag system for detecting damage with the health system. I should have been working next, but there was some miscommunication on my part, so LlamaDev worked at the same time as Camo. Anyways, LlamaDev mainly worked on a new enemy type for the game. This new enemy simply goes in a straight direction. If it can see the player, it'll then change direction to the player when it hits a wall. When it can't see the player, it'll just bounce off the wall and continue going the opposite way. Now is my turn, but to make up for the miscommunication, I decided to work for 2 hours instead of 1. During this time, I mainly worked on more levels, as that was really what the game needed. I also removed the line connecting the button and its link as it looked kind of clunky and completely gave away the button's functionality, which sort of took away part of the puzzle element. At the end of all this work, we had this level where the player would have to mess around turning buttons on and off and manage destroying boxes because of this laser. In the other level, you have to bait enemy projectiles into shooting boxes, which is pretty neat in my opinion. Next up, we have Ikoso, and he mainly worked on the UI and main menu. As you can see, he added a bunch of really cool animations to the main menu, and he also added some more buttons for navigation. It was my turn again, and as usual, I mainly just worked on level design. I made a level 11, and also started working on level 12, nothing really more to it. Now we had Retro working, so here he is. Hi, I'm Retro, and as soon as I got this Unity project, I was just super overwhelmed by the amount of features that are already in the game, and I don't really know how any of them work, so I'm not sure if I'll really be able to do anything with them without breaking everything. So I just decided that I would add some simple post-processing like Bloom to the game, and then just code a simple system to allow sound effects to be added and played in the game. Back to me it was, and can you guess what I did? Yep, I created more levels, and I basically just finished up the 12th level, which I was working on earlier. Now the game just needed one or two more levels, and that should be it for level design. Now it's Aphex's turn, and I'll pass it over to him. Hey, my name's Aphex, and it's my turn to improve the game. I received the game quite late in development, so I decided to not work on core mechanics, but more on polishing the game feel. 
So here's the list of things I want to make better, so let's get started. I started by adding a level text and a timer showing how much time you spend on the level. I changed the scene transition background image to fit it better. Hitting things already has a shaking effect, but to make th hitting boxes and switches even more juicier, I added some particles on here. And as my last touch, I gave the player a death animation similar to the hit effects before. Well, that's all I could do in an hour. Peace! I then added the ability to press R to restart a level, fix some death particle issues, and I started to work on a 13th level. Unfortunately, I ran out of time to actually test this level, but the concept was still there. Now we had Frog Grammar, and he added a bunch of small elements of polish, like squashing when the player dashes, a trail for the player, this new aiming line, more post-processing effects, and so on. Now, for my time, I was planning to add more levels, but honestly, I felt like 13 was probably enough, so I left level design there. Instead, I focused on improving the start screen and making it look more clean. I also added an about screen, wind screen, and special functionality to the quit button. Now I'll pass it over to B-Bomb for his contribution. My name is B-Bomb and I was the 16th developer to work on the game. The game was very close to being done when I worked on it, so I just did some polish and added sound. I added the cursor in the menus and fixed a glitch with eyes rotating towards the player. I got the death effect working and I added sounds in some places that I thought needed them. I also made a couple of smaller changes, but Ben is motioning me to get off the stage, so I guess that's all the time I have. Back to me, and I fixed a button click glitch, fixed scene transitions not playing sometimes, and added the final time system to the game, displayed on the windscreen, which just adds up all your times for each level completion. Next we had X-Ray Dev, so here he is. Hey everyone, my name is X-Ray Dev, and with my hour, I just made some slight color changes and updated a few of the sprites. My changes were mainly focused on giving the game a brighter, more colorful environment, while also trying to better communicate some of the gameplay elements a little more clearly. For example, adding small cracks to the orange blocks to show that they're breaking. I had a blast participating, so thank you so much for including me. X-Ray Dev also made a longer video on his channel, so check that out if you'd like. Back to me again, and I fixed a glitch with the player's trail on death, created a pause menu that is kinda glitchy, but I think it works, and finally added post-processing to the UI for the game. Then we got Llama King, who improved a bunch of art for the game, and gave it this cool kind of top-down perspective. And then I just imported most of this art, and made sure everything was set up correctly. Now for a final contributor, we had Marco Sita, who made this really neat track for the game. And with that said, the core game was pretty much done. I then passed the project over to a bunch of playtesters who gave really great feedback on the game, and I just spent a day tweaking and changing tons of small things. For example, I added a post-processing and particle toggle for those on not the best computers, removed a few clunky levels, modified some sound effects, made an itch page, and just fixed a bunch of other glitchy stuff. This kind of broke the loop, but the game was basically done at this point and really just needed bug fixes and stuff, so I think it's okay. And with that said, the game was basically done. It's honestly really nothing amazing, but it turned out much better than I could have imagined considering it includes the work of 20 different developers with different ways about going making games. So if you want to play the game, the link is in the description. And thanks so much for 20k subscribers and for those who helped make this project come alive. I really couldn't have done it without you. Anyways, that's going to be the end of the video. If you liked it, please leave a like. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out. Also, don't forget to wishlist my game Slime Keep on Steam. Wishlists are really important for the Steam algorithm and take just a few clicks, so that'd be great if you do that. Well, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.